Hi, um, today we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to show you how to do an example that we went over in class where I asked you to create uh, a class of objects called coins. Um, and this is a good example of how to use object-oriented programming in Python as well as the application of um, modeling probabilities. And the, here, here what we're trying to do is be able to create a framework and eventually we'll be able to do some probabilistic modeling that we can use to model phenomena that we might observe in nature. So in this case, we're going to create a class of objects called coins with a couple of different variables associated with it, an outcome and fairness. And then we're going to create a method associated with it that allows us to flip a coin and based upon some probability, uh, figure out if we're going to get a heads or tails from that coin flip. Um, we're going to use NumPy to generate random values um, that will in turn model what a probabilistic outcome might look like. And in the end, we're going to report what the outcome was. Um, after we create this class, we're then going to create a whole bunch of coins, about a thousand of them, flipping them each time and eventually outputting um, what proportion of heads and tails we got. So trying to figure out how well we're able to actually model the probability that we give it. So to do this, one well, of the first things we need to do is we need to um, import NumPy, since we're going to be using that. We want to import our packages at the beginning. Um, we'll be using the random methods from NumPy, so we'll import those. Um, next, we're going to create a class of coins. And to do this, we just start with class coins. And then the first thing we have to do is define the constructor uh, for the class. And basically what the constructor is, is it will be the uh, initial state or conditions that are associated with any member of that class. Whenever I create a coin, all the coins are going to have this. And remember, I always started with this underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, convention. And then I'm going to define some uh, define the two variables that, that I want every member of the class to have. And remember, if it's a variable that belongs to a coin, a specific coin, it always has to start with self. So we'll have self.outcome is equal to a string variable. I also could make an empty string variable this way. So we'll say it's equal to a string variable. And self.fairness, which is the probability of getting a heads per se, um, we're going to make equal to a float. Um, next, I was going to create a, a method. Uh, so here I'm going to create a method to flip my coin and get a result. Um, here we'll call this method flip. And remember, just like for init, since it belongs to coins, uh, I'm always going to put this self first. But I did want to pass a value into this method. Here, if you remember in the assignment, I, I asked that, the, that you could pass a float as a probability threshold um, into my method. So this, this float is actually what I'm going to pass it. This, this threshold will actually be what is going to set my fairness value for my coin. So here I'm going to set fairness of coin. And I just do self.fairness, because it's the fairness associated with this specific coin, is set to threshold. Next, I was going to um, I was going to use this fairness value, and a random number to generate an outcome for my coin flip. So we'll use an if and else statement here because we basically have two outcomes. We can either be heads or tails. And we'll say if numpy, sorry, np.random.random .random is less than self.fairness, then outcome 
sorry, self.outcome is going to be equal to heads. Else, self.outcome is equal to tails. So this is the case where if I generate a random number, which will be a random number between 0 and 1, about 50% of the time, if I set threshold to 0 0.5, about 50% of the time it'll be below that number, and I'll get a heads. About 50% of the time it'll be above that number, and I'll get a tails. So now I can use this new class to um, flip my coin 1,000 times. Um, so I could either make 1,000 different coins and flip them one time, or I could make one coin and flip it 1,000 times. Uh, in this case, we'll just say um, num flips is equal to 1,000, and we'll say for i in range num flips. Right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a coins object. Right. And we'll just call this quarter. And the next thing I want to do is I want to flip that quarter. Um, if we already know what probability threshold we want to take probability of getting a heads. We could say P is equal to 0 0.5. So now if I want to flip my quarter, my flip method is inside my quarter, and I need to give it a float, and I'll give it P. Next, I can set up a little counting method. Um, we'll say this is a heads counter. Num heads is equal to zero. I can say if quarter dot outcome is equal to heads, then num heads plus equals one. At the end, I wanted to output um, the probability, the number of heads, uh, and the number of tails I got. So based upon this process, if I print out, um, I can print number of heads is equal to this value and number of tails is equal to this value and this will equal num heads and number of flips minus num heads. In the same way I can also print out the probability of getting a heads and the probability of getting a tails And we'll set this equal to number of heads divided by the total number of flips, or 1 minus the number of heads divided by 
the number of clicks. Since probabilities always add up to one, I just need to take this value and subtract it from one. Now that I have written all my code, if I hit shift enter, of course I got an error. Oh, oops, I got a num heads right there. And right here, we'll see that if I set the threshold to point, point 0.5, I get 498 heads and 502 tails. Um, Notice that I got zero in zero in this case, and of course that is because uh, this value, these two values are integers. So remember, I got to put, I have to cast one of these things as a float, and then I can get the right probability. So in this case, notice the numbers shift again a little bit, but um, they stay still pretty close to 0.5. Um, every time I do this, you'll know that it's shift, and the reason why is because there's randomness involved, and the probabilities will change slightly. Notice if I lower the probability of getting a heads, if I say there's only a 30% chance that I'll get a heads, um, and I start doing my calculations, I'm able to stay pretty close to that 30% now, where heads is only coming in 30% of the time. Conversely, if I increase the value and say, well, 75% of the time you're going to get a heads, you'll see that the numbers follow that as well. So in this case, you can see how I can model probability and actual counts by using random numbers and specific thresholds. All right, thanks for your attention, guys, and good luck on the quiz.